Silverman, Editorial Director of Commercial Property Executive, and I'm here at this year's NARI conference talking with Joseph Nehas, Chair of the Councillors of Real Estate, about this year's version of the annual ranking of the top 10 issues for real estate. Correct. Thanks for joining me, Joseph. I'm happy to be here, Suzanne. Thank you. I wanted to just maybe take a minute and give you a little background about the splitting, because uh, I think it's relevant. We, uh, we had a, a list of 10, and it became clear that certain items on the list were relevant to owners and operators in the short term, you know, 2018, 2019. Uh, other items on the list had a much longer term perspective, uh, three, five, seven years, because as we know, real estate is a longer term uh, investment, at, investable asset anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the genesis of why we chose this year uh, to split the two. But as it relates to the longer term list, uh, the two that you mentioned that were ranked at number two and one um, are not, uh, they have been on our list in the past, um, so it's not as though they're, they're new and up and coming, and they certainly won't be unfamiliar um, to, uh, to your audience. Um, disruptive technology is number two. Um, essentially, if you, if you think through the process of who our members are and the clients that they're speaking with, um, the, the top 10 issues reflect uh, a great deal of um, question and inquiry and query from uh, those practitioners and clients about what things should they be thinking about relative to their real estate projects, whether they're owners, developers, uh, investors, tenants, etc. Um, and as a result, um, disruptive technology, I suspect you're not surprised, um, shows very high. Examples uh, are things like driverless cars, um, drones, um, you know, the onslaught of, uh, of all the apps that are displacing or disintermediating uses such as Airbnb and Uber and so on and so on. Um, essentially, what we have found is that any one of those technologies um, is not a, an overnight phenomenon. It's not going to change someone's business tomorrow, next month, next quarter. Uh, so infrastructure, um, which is related to the disruptive technology, mm -hmm. because in a, in a, again, world of driverless cars, and we don't know if we're going to have a world of driverless cars, but I, I think most people would agree that there's going to be some form of driverless transportation. Mm -hmm. um, and, but in that environment, um, design and layout of inner cities changes. Um, space that we had dedicated to roads might now be dedicated to rail and mass transit. So instead of you know three and four lanes, maybe right now we need two and three lanes. So infrastructure could become a beneficiary of disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. And when you when you look at what happens in in markets that have deteriorating infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, you can find. Um, without much difficulty, unfortunately, declining values, uh, uh, declining employment, uh, exodus of, of, uh, of, um, of residents, um, because if they can, sometimes they can't get out of declining marketplaces, mm -hmm. uh, because if we're not spending money on our roads and our bridges and our transit systems, et cetera, um, that tends to have a ripple effect to property values. Right. But, so disruptive technology could create an opportunity that say, well, now that we have this new technology, um, we can dedicate resources that otherwise would have had to maintain roads. We can dedicate that to maintaining bridges or um, enhancing mass transit. And if you start to invest in infrastructure, mm -hmm. you create an activity and, inv and value uh, in locations that draw people in. It draws employers, it draws workers and residents, and the reverse begins to happen. Now values begin to grow as opposed to fall, right. and you have a really different, a really different uh, market outcome. So that's what we saw with infrastructure because of it being a beneficiary. It really rose to number one mm -hmm. um, because it has such a, a wider uh, net because it is all markets generally um, and multiple avenues, i.e. bridges, you know, 
roads, waterways, mass transit, etc. Right. Well, now let's talk about the current trends. A big one on there was housing affordability, and that's certainly been a big topic of conversation yes. lately. The housing affordability issue um, is a is a challenging issue, uh, but many, I think, in the in the in the business who understand it, I think would tell you it's not a particularly complex issue. Mm -hmm. um, because essentially what we need is more supply and more density of housing in order to lower prices. Simple and supply and demand. Simple supply, thank you, yes. Yeah, simple <laughs> supply and demand. And, um, but unfortunately the politics often get in the way mm -hmm. because housing projects like so much of real estate development is often uh, determined by uh, local and perhaps regional you know, planning, zoning, boards, municipalities. And, um, you know, we have a real challenge with the, uh, uh, the you know, we've heard the acronym NIMBY, not in my backyard, mm -hmm. where um, these decision makers are beholding more to the voters on these issues than they are to the basic market fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, um, they make decisions that aren't in the best interest of housing affordability and are more in the best interest of getting reelected. Um, and that's a challenge for many of our counselors and our clients uh, and their clients to overcome because you you find that, you know, unless you find that one, you know, zoning board that's really willing to maybe stick their neck out and defy the voters because it's a good project that will bring good rateables, uh, that will solve a, a housing affordability issue. Um, uh, more often than not, they, they come up short. And then that creates a ripple effect of problems, which means people now have to move out further, which cr generates more commute, which has pollution impacts and energy impacts because we're using more fossil fuels. So, you know, one issue about how decisions are made about affordable housing ripples into other areas mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of, of lifestyle and, and choices for, for both people who need housing and also businesses who hire employees and how they get their employees to work into the office. Right. Um, so uh, housing affordability is uh, probably has some political issues that uh, will be difficult to overcome as well. And again, not unlike infrastructure, um, there's not a scenario where it gets better as time goes on. It probably just gets worse as mm -hmm. time goes on.